RT has a story about a scientific breakthrough uh, that came out this week. They say, American scientists have grown a liver which can manage the closest ever set of processes that, to that of a real human one. The lab-grown organ has the potential to be a game-changer for patients suffering from liver diseases, they said. Scientists at the Sabin Research Institute of the Children's Hospital Los Angeles created the liver with the help of both people and mice. The study published in the journal Stem Cells Translational Medicine on Tuesday said... So they want to explain here that they did use stem cells and progenitor cells. And as of now, the main issue that they're facing is that the tissue has a slightly different cellular structure than the naturally occurring tissue. Um, but this is something that perhaps they'll iron out. And they, again, say this is a major, major breakthrough. And think about what you can do if you can basically regenerate or grow livers out of nowhere for people. <laughs> so somebody could destroy their liver and then they're like, that's nice. Let, let me press a button and build you a new one and then fix your life. Ugh. That is unbelievable. And I hate to do it, except I don't hate to do it because I love to do it and I'm going to do it again. <laughs> but, do draw a parallel between this and between the way people used to try to fix serious issues like this. Prayer. <laughs> I mean, that's what people would do. They have some sort of health issue, some sort of problem, psychological problem, whatever the problem is, material problem in their life. And what do you do? I don't know. Get on your knees and say, God, please help me find a way to make this better. I'm. It's basically just wishing out loud, hoping out loud. That has a success rate of roughly 0.00%. <laughs> Maybe I'm being unfair. Maybe we'll give it a 0.03% because some people convince themselves through some sort of placebo effect, and then, okay, things feel a little better, even though they're not really better, but you felt like it's better, so then result is better. Whatever. <laughs> so maybe that exists. No, but here we're talking about real-world solutions to real-world problems. And scientists are the unsung heroes of most of the good things we have. When you talk about modern technology, when you talk about medicine, when you talk about breakthroughs like this, it's the smart dudes in the fucking lab coats with the clipboards who've been working on it all along. And what do they prove? They prove there are no shortcuts. Like, there are no fucking shortcuts in life. Like, you have to, you have to, have to, have to buckle down, get serious, immerse yourself in a world of all this stuff in order to be successful in it and in order to get the answers. And this isn't just for medicine, this is for anything in life. You want to be successful in your career, you, whatever the fuck it happens to be. I know a lot of people want to be fucking actors and singers and all that shit. Like what, you think you just get up there and start singing one day and that's, okay, there, I'm famous. It happened. No, it's fucking, you got to go out there and sing at every opportunity you can and you got to be naturally good enough and it, like all these different things go into it and it's just natural talent, hard work, put together, busting your ass, single-minded in your pursuit of the goal. And then, you know, you come out the other end successful, and it works. And that's what's happening here. You have people who, it's just problem solving one day after another day after another day, and, you know, coming up with a hypothesis and testing the hypothesis and going through the scientific method and going, okay, we got it wrong this time. Okay, we got it wrong again. We got it wrong again. We got it wrong again. Oh, look at that. Maybe we're on to something. Okay, now we got it. Oh my God, we can fucking regrow livers. What just happened? This is insane. Think about that, man. Think about that. Can you imagine telling somebody in 1850, you know, there's going to come a time when today, for example, somebody gets a face transplant. There's somebody who got a face transplant and he's living and just living a life now. <laughs> That's insanity. That is fucking insanity. Now, they're not perfect, but they're going to, over time, it's going to get better and better and better. You know, you talk about computers, you talk about artificial intelligence, the road we're going down with that. It just gets better and better and better. It's like exponential growth to getting better and better and better. And... It's time to shed the skin of the past. The idea that, you know, you pray to God when something goes wrong, you do a fucking rain dance to try to get rain around a fire, all these goofy things, that, and there are remnants of it still around today. All that is is a primitive mindset holding us back from the actual potential for humanity. Now, there are downsides, too. The downsides are humans get ahead of themselves, and we get... Technology that is scientifically advanced, even though we're not morally advanced as a species. So we create nuclear weapons, and then we use them. 
we can destroy the world with a few well-placed nuclear weapons. That's not good. That's not, so that's the downside. But you also have massive upsides in medicine and cures and technology and making lives better for everybody. And when you read stuff like this, you go, oh, isn't this a breath of fresh air? In a world of turmoil and death and destruction and horrible news all the time, there are some people in labs busting their ass, finding a way to fix people when something goes wrong. I salute them. That's all I have to say.